The race for 2024 has begun. It seems like we just closed the books on the midterms and politics is in full bloom, if bloom is the right word. On November 15th of last year, just after the midterms, former President Trump announced he was running for the third time. And now he has company on the Republican side. Former South Carolina governor and UN ambassador Nikki Haley announced she too is running with a call for a new generation of leaders. For those hoping for a high-minded debate about the size and scope and role and competency of government, you may be disappointed. Political debate in this country is often replaced with one-liners and nicknames and tweets and not very subtle innuendo. Governor Ron DeSantis hasn't even announced his plans for 2024, but that has not stopped the attacks from coming. Not the normal attacks from the New York Times or the Washington Post. No, this attack was from a failed Republican gubernatorial candidate in Arizona. Three months ago, she thought Ron DeSantis was the best thing since sliced bread. Now she wants you to think Governor DeSantis was endorsed by George Soros. Of course, it's not true, but why let the truth get in the way? A Republican member of Congress referred to Nikki Haley this week as, quote, a bush in heels. It was intended as an insult, which sent me scurrying to the history books. Can you guess the last Republican president to win both the popular vote and the Electoral College? If you guessed Bush and Bush, you're right. Monday is President's Day, the perfect time to reflect on not only the presidents of yesteryear, but also on what we want in a president and why we so infrequently get what we want. Great nations, great people should have great leaders. We should demand them. But who wants to run in this environment? Nikki Haley was considered a good governor, but her service is dismissed with a quip about women's shoes from another Republican woman. Don Lemon insulted her, which is not a surprise. It's the attacks from other GOP women that had me scratching my head. Ron DeSantis may have been the biggest winner of all last November. He was reelected in overwhelming fashion and without even announcing a bid for president. He's attacked. When I think of the presidents many of us admire, Ronald Reagan and Abraham Lincoln come to mind. I was at the Reagan Presidential Library a couple of weeks ago, standing at his burial place, looking toward the Pacific Ocean, wondering whether he could even win the nomination today. He would be considered too optimistic, too hopeful for America. Lincoln, I fear, would have no chance to win the nomination. His modesty, his humility would do him in. Some voters say they want a fighter. You don't need a presidential primary for that. You can go to a bar late on a Friday night or an NFL football game and sit in the stands and watch a fight. I want a thinker who knows when to fight and has deeply held convictions about precisely what he or she is fighting for, and a persuader. Perhaps someone can fight his or her way to a small electoral college victory. The right person, however, could fight and persuade his or her way to a mandate, a sweeping landslide. Reagan won every state but one. He did it by knowing when to fight, and who to fight. And it wasn't his own teammates. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.